works. All right, I think we are working. I am Drew Badger, the founder of EnglishAnyone.com and the English Fluency Guide. It is a pleasure to welcome you to another live video. Hopefully this will be interesting, uh, especially if you are new to my channel, because I'm going to be talking about something that uh, a lot of people will probably find unbelievable, uh, and that's really that you get your practice from all of the input uh, as you're learning rather than trying to use a lot of output in practice speaking. Uh, obviously, uh, speaking is the goal, but really the point uh, that I want to make in this video, I'll use my little iceberg example again. When you look at an iceberg, uh, just the tip of it is usually floating above the surface of the water, uh, and this is really all the speaking that you do. Uh, and most of the learning is done down here. So actually all of the practice you can do uh, is without actually saying anything. So if you spend a lot of time really understanding the language, that's how you speak. So just to be very clear about this, uh, you really get your practice from listening, not from speaking. And I don't mean only listening, the point is really just understanding the language like a native. So I wanted to cover, it was actually a comment I received, I think, a while back. I couldn't find the comment again, but it was just talking about giving examples for the word make. So we're going to talk about that in this video. I'll actually try to keep it uh, pretty short, as I usually do, uh, but then <laughs> I'll go longer. Uh, I have time uh, to answer more questions today. Actually, a little bit less time than usual, but if you have questions, you can let me know. So again, we're going to help you practice your English, and you will actually feel yourself becoming more fluent as you understand better with this lesson. Okay, so the goal is not to try to repeat after me. You can do that if you like, but really the point is just to understand the language very well, and you do that with lots of what I call naturally varied review. So this will be one example of this uh, where naturally varied review, again, it comes in many different forms, but this one we will be looking at just one word and really trying to understand it with many different examples. All right, so hello, nice to see everybody there. Looks like chat is working. We got some good people over there. <laughs> Welcome back. Uh, nice to see everybody here. Got people from, uh, let's see, India, Brazil. Nice to see everybody. All right, well, let's get started with the video. So this comment was talking about or asking me, I believe, I couldn't find the comment anymore, but it was talking about the word make. And so I want to cover a bunch of different examples of this to really help you understand it like a native. All right. The basic idea of make, uh, or really not just make, but learning any vocabulary is not to get a definition or a translation, but it's just to see so many different examples of it that you really understand it like a native. Okay. Uh, so we'll just begin with some basic things like if you can put this in the chat, I want to do this with you. So anything that comes to your mind, what are things that you can make? Anything that you can make. All right, there's like a lot of them and I have a bunch of things prepared, but I want to see what you know already uh, and then we can cover some more examples. So just think about anything that you can make, anything you can make. All right, so nice to see everybody. I'll check out chat for just a second here. All right, nice to see everybody that's, uh, that's new here, especially new viewers. Oh, Julian was just watching another video of mine. <laughs> All right, very good. All right, so you can make, you can make something happen. That's an interesting example. Let me put this up here. I'll put make a little bit higher. So let's see, we got to uh, make sure we fit it up here. So we're going to have a lot of different examples of make. Oh. Yeah, me no ni hongo wagan na kidon. Yo me nae desho. All right, let's see. I can make a cake. All right, good example. So we can make a cake, anything else. Just keep them coming, put them down in the comments. Uh, again, it's faster if you can put something in there. <laughs> you can put them, uh, put them in the comments. Actually, so make, well make homework. Now this is a, a trickier example. And yeah, make a bed, that's a good one. Uh, when you make homework, that would mean the creation of homework rather than doing your homework. So a teacher might make some homework. They might write, you know, put some examples or something like that, but a student would do the homework. So just to be clear about that. So you can make, let's say you can make coffee. 
Oops, coffee. You can make tea. So all of these uh, so far, we just have a few different examples. What makes someone's day? Wow, okay, we're going to save that one for uh, and make things happen. Uh, both of those are very good examples. We're gonna make some of those uh, or make, use some of those a little bit later. Make a call. So make my day. To make someone's day, make someone's day. All right, so when we just have the, the basic meaning of make, we're really talking about creating something, all right? Or taking something uh, from nothing and then building it into something else. So all these things, you can make some food where we take different ingredients. Yeah, so Simona got the uh, example right there, Simona. Uh, so you can make different kinds of food. You could make a pizza, you could make uh, toast, you could make uh, you know, breakfast, lunch, or dinner, make a decision, yeah. Make a decision, all right? And, and again, the point is, as you get more and more examples of this, you really start feeling like, ah, I'm really getting it though. Make you upset, very good. So you could make someone upset. Or make someone angry, make someone happy. So you make time. Yep, another one. So we could say make a call, make a decision, make time, or make coffee, or you can make plans. Make a mistake, very good. All right, to make someone happy. Yep, so the same idea. So we've got make someone do something. All right, we can make someone feel a certain way or we, we can make someone actually do a certain uh, behavior. You can make money, sure. Make a house, yep. I've got kind of two different columns or a couple of different columns here. So these are basic physical things we might be able to make uh, or we could have something a little bit more figurative. So you're making a phone call, you could make time. Now, when we think about making time, it doesn't mean we like create time. It's more like kind of finding time. So maybe you're, you're actually busy in your schedule, but you decide to make time for somebody. So a friend of yours is busy, make a dress. Yeah. So it's a very useful word, very versatile word. Uh, and it's really easy to, again, when you have lots of different examples of it, to understand the word. Uh, but I want to make sure people understand these a little bit more difficult ones over here. Yeah, so we got make tea. Now be careful for things that are countable or not countable. So we can't put our hand in a teacup and like pull out the teas. It's just tea. So that's why we say make tea, make coffee, make food, make a house, make a dress, that kind of thing. So be careful when you're using these different examples. Make a cake, make a bed. Now this is a bed over here. This is an interesting example uh, because we're talking about kind of making it not, we're not like, not like building a bed, but to make your bed means to actually kind of make it clean again and to put it back to the way it was. So you might have a messy bed and then you want to make the bed again. We want to make your bed, make it clean, make it clean. All right. So make a cake, make a bed, make coffee, make tea, make food, make a house, make a dress. We have make a call, make a decision. So again, you see the, the meaning of make, it changes just a little bit. Yeah, we got make money over here. But it's always good to make more. There you go, make more. <laughs> so make more money, all right? Make more money, make some money, to make money. And again, the, the idea is not like the, the money is already there, but we use this idea of kind of creating something or bringing something. But you see, instead of just studying one example, we're looking at a lot of different examples. Make America great again. There you go. MAGA, make America great again. All right. So we want to make America great. And this is the same idea where we're getting something a little bit more technical. MAGA. Yep. So make my day. MAGA, actually, it's interesting. That was used, uh, I think like Reagan used that expression, like a couple of different people, maybe even Clinton used that expression also. <laughs> so I, I don't think it's, it's not originally from Trump. Uh, so make something into something else. All right, so this is a little bit trickier and I wanted to cover a couple of these. Uh, <laughs> we're gonna start getting people more political in the comments, I think. Uh, so we make subjects, verbs, and adjectives. Well, uh, again, like 
I, I caution you, I really don't want you to start thinking about like, okay, is this a verb or an adjective or an adverb or whatever, and, and try to think about diagramming sentences like this, because natives would not do that. So natives are just looking at lots of examples, and it's all of the examples in English that make you understand, to make you understand, all right? So to make you To make you understand. Make you understand. Yeah, food. <laughs> so we want to make food, make plans, make time, make a mistake, or make money. So you can't count money, but you can count dollars or yen or whatever. You're counting the different currency or bills or coins, that kind of thing. All right? Everybody getting this so far? It's pretty easy. Lots of examples. Lots of people can think of some. Let's see if I have uh, some more over here. Uh, before we cover this, I'll give you a few quick phrasal verbs uh, because I know a lot of people are interested in those as well. So let me erase some of these examples over here. Just give you a few uh, phrasal verbs. But the same kind of idea is what we have uh, still for make. So we might have make to make up something. Like to make up a lie, to make up an idea. It just means to think something and almost like we're, we're, we're creating an idea out of nothing. So if I ask my daughter, oh, you're, you're playing a, a game or something, where did you get that from? Or, or where did you get the idea for that? And she said, oh, I just, I made it up, made it up. All right, so make over is another one. make something over, make something over. And often you will hear these, I mean, makeup is the same kind of thing, like going from a lower level to a higher level. Uh, and you will hear this as like either with a dash or without a dash there uh, for the phrasal noun, which is what, you know, women are putting on makeup or anybody can, like an actor might put on some makeup to make up, to change their face. They're changing their face in some way. They're creating a new thing. All right, so another thing, make up your mind, make up your mind. Yeah, that gets even a little bit more complex. All right, we also have make, make into. Now this is a very, very common and very useful phrasal verb where we want to turn something into something else. So we want to change something in some way. So remember, make, it could be creation, it could be transforming something, it could be taking just like food, we've got different ingredients and we combine them into make something, make something new. Make someone down, says Leo. What do you mean by that exactly? Make someone down. You might make someone feel down or you might let someone down. That's a little bit different where you disappoint someone, disappoint someone. But to make into, so I might, I might be talking about a person, so I'm going to make you into a man. I'm going to take a boy and make him into a man. Or I'm going to take these ingredients and make them into some, uh, some delicious food. So I'm going to transform something in some way. Transform something in some way. <laughs> All right, let's see. Uh, I think we had uh, make out. Yes, that's another one. Now, make out can actually have a couple of different meanings. A higher level one uh, is like, how did you make out? So how did you do, let's say I'm, a, I'm like a robber and I'm going to a bank and I steal some money and some other bankers, or not bankers, <laughs> some other criminals or robbers, uh, they say, oh, how did you make out? So like, how much money did you get? How did you make out? So this means like, how did you, how did you transform that situation? How did you get something? What did you get from that, all right, to make out? Like, like, I made out all right. Yeah, I made out with a bunch of money to make out with, all right? And then, of course, you have the make out, like, like the kissing, kind of making out, that kind of making out, all right? So make back, make love. Ooh, make love. Make love. Make a travel to anywhere. Yeah, we wouldn't really make travel. You would just travel. You could take, take a trip, but we, or you could, you could make a trip. You could say that, make a trip. Make a trip. I think this example might have even been in that, uh, in, in that comment where he's talking about making a trip uh, and, and asking like why we use make rather than something else. Again, uh, forgive me, I get lots of comments. I didn't remember exactly what it was and I couldn't find it anymore. Uh, but to make a trip, and I want, I want to be clear that we can also have different ways of saying something. So we could have a trip, we could take a trip, we could make a trip, and all those are perfectly fine native ways of expressing that, 
Okay, so they're all, they all mean the same thing. Like, I, I have a trip, uh, have a good trip, you can tell someone. Make believe, ooh, that's a, that's, a, that's a difficult one too, that's an advanced one, to make believe, make believe. So have a trip, make a trip. But hopefully, is everybody getting this idea? Make is a basic, very simple word, but obviously you can see it's got lots of advanced uses. So we can have the phrasal verb examples and we can also have the more examples where we're trying to make someone do something else. Make an excuse, another one, very good. So make an excuse, we're creating something, okay? Pretty easy. So the last few I'll cover up here, uh, we can have some more examples. So we had someone already like make someone sad or make someone happy. Let me get over here. And you can have make my day. So to make someone's day means to do something really fantastic to, to make them feel uh, very good. Wow, you, you sent me some flowers, you just made my day. You made my day. You made me very happy, okay? So I can make a person, so here's me. I'm, gonna, I'm going to, let's say I, I can just use some magic and boom, here's, here's my magic. I got a magic wand and some little magic dust or something and poof, I make a person. So I make someone. This means I create that other person. So I make someone over here. But I can also, I can make someone happy. Watch. There's a smiley face. I just made them happy. Okay? So I can make someone, like I can make a child if I actually like have a, have a child. Or I can make someone like this in magic. Or I can make someone happy. Or I can make someone work. I can make someone do something. So make someone work. Can I beatbox? <laughs> yeah, I suppose I could beatbox. I'd probably break the microphone if I tried to do that, but yeah, why do you ask? That's an interesting question. Uh, so I make someone work. All right, so again, I make someone means to create a person, or I make someone happy, meaning I can make them feel a certain way, or I can do something to them, or I can make them do something else. All right. I can make something worth. Well, you can make something, yeah, you can make something uh, worth something else. That's an even, even longer one. How much do you make? It, another, another good question. How much do you make? And so if we're talking about money, we're asking a very question. I draw very well. <laughs> yes, my, I can, I'm actually an amazing artist, but I just draw badly on these videos. <laughs> I do that because I want to be very quick. I don't want to spend a lot of time trying to draw something very nice, but hopefully you get the point, all right? So I make someone work, I make someone do something, I can make someone maybe tell, I can make someone tell me a secret. So I can hold a, hold a gun to their head and I say, tell me what's happening, okay? Tell me the secret. I can make someone tell me the secret. And make some noise. Again, that's a more uh, simple example, but correct. You can make some noise. All right, we get the point, yes, all right. So again, the point of this video is that as you're listening to all these different examples, the point is not to try to even repeat after me, although you can do this. The point is to get lots of different examples so that you actually feel much more confident uh, and fluent. And again, it's not about speaking, it's about really understanding the language. And so rather than hearing like a definition of make or a translation of make, you really should be getting all of this, okay? So this is actually how natives are getting fluent. And I'll just make a quick just point about this. The way natives become fluent is they're getting lots of understandable messages, but it's really not that systematic. So a parent might say something one time to a child, and if the parent doesn't repeat that word, then the child will likely forget that. Uh, it may even just stay as a part of their passive vocabulary rather than uh, being something they can use actively. All right, but if you can learn like a native and do it systematically, so instead of waiting for someone to just randomly tell you the word again, so maybe a native speaker might hear something on Tuesday on a radio program and then Wednesday they hear something on a TV show, but they don't hear it again for many weeks. They will probably forget that information, 
okay? But if you can hear lots of different examples and then tomorrow you hear a bunch of different examples, <coughs> excuse me, and you hear those from different speakers. So maybe you hear a different speaker giving these different examples or you hear them in real conversations where you hear someone or you watch a TV show and someone says, why do you make me feel this way? Why do you, why do you make me feel this way? The point is to get lots of different examples. This is naturally varied review, okay? Now I can answer some more questions, but this is the basic idea and I just wanted to cover something very quickly. Look at that, we did that in only 20 minutes, fantastic. All right, so I'm going to go back through uh, comments and if you have anything else you'd like to know, uh, or it could be about this or it could be about anything else, um, I'll, can I explain make over again? So to make over, it means like, we're, we're trying to take something and turn it into something else to make over. Uh, you might have, often you will see this as a phrasal noun, so that means we're going to put the two words together and make it one thing, like makeover. So if you watch a TV show like a home makeover or a dog makeover where we you know, take a dog and make them look pretty again or something like that, um, to make something into something else. So it's the same basic idea, uh, but we have like make over or make into. These are, these are actually pretty similar. But we make over is the more typical one where we put the two words together. Make over, a make over, a make over, make over, a make over. So I need a, I feel like I need a make over, you know, for my, for my, my life or my fashion. So you, you will find something like that, like a fashion, uh, fashion makeover show where they take people who dress maybe like me, <laughs> who, who kind of are like boring and then put them in some interesting fashions, like a fashion makeover show. Yeah, so we got the example, she makes me, she makes me smile. Yep, so you make me smile. And again, not only hearing these different examples, but hearing them used in different ways. So like you do something to me, you make me smile, I make you smile. And you can practice those different things. Even just writing these different examples will help you feel more. Is it okay if I hear you boot back? Are you trying to make me? You want to make me beatbox? Make me beatbox. You want to make me beatbox? That's, I, maybe, I think, did I, I probably saw a comment a while ago about somebody asking me about beatboxing. Did I, did I do that in a video? Something like that? I make myself fit. Yeah, another good example. Yeah, I need to. I need to think. I need to get like a good. Yeah, I'm not in. I'm not in a beatboxing mood. I guess. Make yourself another good example. <laughs> I'm probably not going to do some very good beatboxing in this video. Uh, but yes, but if you were trying to make me beatbox, you could make. You could hold a gun to my head and make me beatbox. That's true. Make me beatbox. All right. Let's see if we got any more questions. This could be a very quick video. But again, hopefully you get the point. You can really do this with anything. I'm just doing this with one particular word. This is the kind of thing we do uh, in Fluent for Life where we really want to focus on something and systematically review it. So if you hear something just one time, which is uh, what you will usually do in most English videos here on YouTube, so you will have someone that's just introducing a bunch of vocabulary, you will go through it very quickly and then you will probably not remember that information. But if you can review it many, many times in different ways and not just in one video, uh, you should be going back and reviewing these things again and again. Uh, and I show many different ways you can do that uh, in different videos like the uh, espresso, making espresso. So another example of make, so how to make espresso. So just like making coffee, making tea, we have how to make espresso and I have a couple of different people that show you how to make that. And so as you listen to these different examples of people talking about that topic, you will become much more confident about talking about those things too even if you don't say anything. Yes, you make English easier. Very good, Zainab. To make English easier. Yes, that is the goal, to make it easier. So we want to go from hard to easy, to make something easier, okay? So hopefully uh, I'm giving you all these examples of make and they will, they will seep into your brain and you will think, ah, I, I get it now, I understand what we're talking about. I would like to go in the moon. You wanna go in the moon, like inside of it, or you just wanna go to the moon, to the moon? So Brittany is asking, what is this all about? Uh, this is all about beatboxing. 
pretty good, right? So you make English easier. So this is about how we can take one word and really go through it again and again and get lots of different examples of it, all right? Uh, unfortunately, this is not the way we learn English at school. Yeah, the interesting thing is it is the way that you learned your native language at school. <laughs> So you have like the same school, this is such a fascinating thing about, about language learning. I'll just use Japan as an example because I'm in Japan. Uh, but we have, here is a uh, Japanese school, and we have like, there's a little flag out front, Japanese flag. Uh, and so we have some uh, classrooms over here, and here are some students, here's the teacher. Just imagine that's a classroom. I know my drawing is not very good. Uh, but in the Japanese classroom and in all of the other classes, uh, they are hearing many, many different examples of Japanese. And even if, ch even if children are not speaking, most of the time they're spending in school, they are not talking. They're just listening to the teacher and getting lots of information. That's all they do, okay? So it's very limited amount of time of actually speaking. But in the English class over here, uh, they're learning a completely different way. Why? It's a really good question. Uh, so they're, they're, they're basically doing the opposite of everything else they're doing over here, when it would be much faster and easier for them just to learn, again, in a more efficient way than they're getting out here. So a child, a Japanese child, might hear uh, like one word in this classroom, and in the next classroom they hear that same word again from a different teacher. And this could be Japanese class, this is science class or gym class or whatever. What time is it in Japan now? It is uh, almost 11 a.m. in Japan. I would like to bite, bite my tail. You mean bit, bite your tail? All right. Uh, you could make videos on how to speak English in a hotel reception or with content focused on the hotel industry. Yes, that content is already available. If you go on YouTube about like, I'm sure you can find that information already available. Uh, and some of this would be hotel training for people who work in that industry. So how to, how to like accept people when they're checking into a hotel. Uh, or you might have, I don't know, like working in room service or other things like that. And you'll get these things from training or just from watching people checking into hotels. So if you go to YouTube, like where we are right now, after this video is finished, just type in the search how to check into a hotel. And you will probably find lots of videos about people just checking into hotels, uh, or it will be actually training videos about that. So you can find really interesting training. Uh, you're saying input is more important. Yes, correct. That is, the, 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 the goal really is to understand the language very well. So my, my deep, big, important point uh, is that if you don't understand the language, then you won't feel confident using it, okay? So we can imagine like two different students. So this is uh, student A and student B over here. Uh, and student A hears the word make. And maybe they get a translation or a definition. Oh, make means to create something. And they're thinking, okay, like they imagine maybe one example or two examples of that. Like I'm making, uh, making a birdhouse. So here's a, uh, a picture of a birdhouse right here. A birdhouse. So I might make make something like that. And so when they think about make, they're thinking about making constructing a physical thing like this. But they're not thinking like make a trip or to make someone happy or to make someone's day. That's what the student B is doing over here. Okay. So student B is getting naturally varied review. And remember that it's it basically works like this. So student A thinks like okay if I speak. Uh, then I get fluent. So they're thinking about speaking practice, like speaking is the way that they practice. So they learn the word make, and then they repeat the word make. Make, 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 make. Maybe they write it down, or they, they hear some examples, like uh, kind of slow examples from uh, an English lesson. Uh, and the teacher says, like, I make, uh, I make a sandwich, something like that. And so the student repeats that, I make a sandwich, I make this, I make that. Uh, but when they get into a real conversation and they start hearing all of these other examples, then they're just not prepared for that because their mind is thinking like, oh, make means you kind of build a physical thing like that. 
It's only over time that you really understand what make means and you get that from lots of these different examples, okay? And then you also hear them not just learning the words, but hearing them in different tenses, hearing them from different speakers, hearing them at different speeds, okay? This is what makes you a good speaker, all right? So it's not speaking that gets you fluent, it's understanding. Understanding leads to confidence, and then confidence lets you speak. So the speech is actually the result uh, of really understanding something. So this is the first thing that most people think they start with. They start with speaking, uh, but speaking is the end over here. Okay, so speech. And this makes sense. Most people, uh, adult speakers or even native speakers, they will not feel confident talking about something unless they really know it well. Okay, pretty easy. All right, so it's, it's just a different way and I'm trying to make, make you think differently about this, trying to make you think differently, especially if you are new to this channel. Many people who have followed me for a while, this is old, old news for them, okay? I'll talk to myself for improving. Yes, I'm saying you don't even need to do that. It's all, it's basically all like I would say if I had to put a number on it, uh, if you make me give you a number, it would be like 95% just understanding the language really well. All right. All right. Let me go back and see if I missed something because we had a whole bunch of comments that come that came through here. Let's see. Simona, uh, how can you explain to a child the difference between O and OW in a word where it goes? Uh, Simona, if you're asking about pronunciation, I think maybe you're asking about spelling, like O-U versus O-W, like OW, like O-U-T, uh, out, and cow. Is that what you mean? Uh, you can learn this in Frederick. If you click on the link in the description below this video, you can get Frederick, and it will show you how to do this step by step. It's very easy. All right. So let me go back. I'm going I'm to actually go back from... Uh, let's see from the from the from the end here. How many people buy lottery tickets hoping to make off with the, with a fortune? Yeah, hoping to make off with a fortune. Now I will be careful. That's a good example, but it's a, a slight misuse of the word. Typically, to make off with something usually means I'm stealing it uh, or I'm getting it through like. It could be maybe a way that's not a good way. So if I'm making off with something like that, or I got like really a, a, good, a good deal at a, uh, at a store. So wow, he really made off with a great deal. Uh, but if you're just talking about like making a fortune, so people want to make a fortune uh, in, that, in that respect, they really don't want to make a fortune at all. They just want to get a fortune. <laughs> So people who buy the lottery are not really trying to make anything. They're just trying to hopefully win, uh, win some money without making anything at all, without making an effort, okay, without doing anything. All right, so make off from prison. Like make off, mm, well, you, you wouldn't, we wouldn't use, if, if you're talking about escaping from prison, uh, like you would, I mean, you would, usually, usually you, would, you would make off with, like some bank robbers would make off with some money. So they would steal something, but if you're just trying to, to talk about escaping from prison, you would be get out or break out of prison. So if they, if they escape, all right? So we can have different examples uh, for prison. If, if my time is finished at prison and they let me out, like they just open the doors and they let me out of prison, they let me out, or I could get out of prison somehow, like I could maybe uh, escape, or I could actually like blow a hole in the wall and I could break out of prison. So these are different ways, different phrasal verbs you can use to describe that, but the situation is a little bit different. What is your favorite phrasal verb? <laughs> My favorite phrasal verb. I don't know if I have a favorite phrasal verb. I think what, what maybe I gave the example before uh, I forget what that was. This is a few years ago. I think someone asked me that question. What is my favorite phrasal verb? Um, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't remember. I, I use many phrasal verbs and <laughs> I don't, I don't have a, uh, have one that's like, a, you know, a particular one that I like. Uh, how about get away with it? Is it kind of similar? Yes. So if you get away with something, if you think about holding something, so I've got something in my hand and now I'm getting away with that thing. So if, if, I let, if I steal these markers, then I'm getting away with these markers. 
or if I, in general, let's say I steal a whole bunch of money, it could be even from a computer. So I don't physically carry anything to a different place. I'm still getting away with a crime if nobody catches me. All right, so if I get caught, then I, I did not get away with it. I, I, got, I got caught, okay? So yes, make an accident. Yeah, you could, you could make an accident. You could cause an accident, same way. So I tried to use a sugarcoat word. I've learned from your previous classes, I use it like this. I sugarcoated my friend's outfit. Is that correct? Well, in that, in that case, you're, you're saying you like put sugar on the outfit itself. <laughs> Now, I don't want to laugh, but this is actually a very good example of using it. Uh, and it, I, again, the more examples you get of something, the more confident you will feel about it. So to sugarcoat something typically means like uh, in that case, let's say your friend has a new outfit and uh, she says, oh, what do you think of that? Uh, think about this. I say, oh, I think that looks really nice. It's a really lovely shirt or dress or something. And maybe I don't actually think so. So I'm sugarcoating my words about the outfit. I'm sugarcoating my words, okay? Or I could be using sugarcoat like uh, if, if my, I'm, like my boss at work, he comes to me and he says, hey, how are sales this month? And I say, oh, they're okay. The sales are, are okay this month. And he says, don't sugarcoat it. Tell me, tell me the truth, what's going on? And I say, okay, sales are pretty bad actually. <laughs> Okay, so I'm sugarcoating usually my language or my description of something, but if you sugarcoat a physical thing, it means you actually put sugar on that. <laughs> so if I like sugarcoat my hair, I'm taking sugar and putting it on top of my hair. Uh, let's see, say a tongue twister for us teacher. A tongue twister, a tongue twister. Uh, here, here's, a, here's a tongue twister my older daughter Aria likes. She sells seashells by the seashore. She sells seashells by the seashore. See if you can say that quickly. All right, let me, now this is gonna be, this is gonna be tricky because we got way too many comments now. Uh, all right, let's see, make me, okay, I'm going back through these. So you crack me up, yes, very good. So that's actually, yeah, to crack someone up, that's a good one, or you can make someone laugh. Uh, let's see, greetings from mainland China, nice to see you there. Uh, my next habit, work with friends more deeply for more understanding. All uh, right, let's see. I think, all right, I think we got through these already. Can you recommend some books for learning English? <clears throat> uh, it depends on what you want to learn. If you just like reading, I would focus on a particular topic, but there isn't a book or even a selection of books I recommend that's only for uh, learning I actually thought about doing a video where I compare native textbooks with uh, English learner textbooks. I can just give a quick example of that. If you're interested, I can talk about that right now. Let me know in the comments. Um, but yeah, it's, it, there isn't like one book that I recommend for that because the point is not to learn the language by studying rules. It's just to get lots of examples like this, to get naturally varied review. So teacher, I live here in Brazil. I can speak English well and Spanish well. Glad to hear it. Jawad says, can you suggest me an American cartoon or kids show that can help me to improve my English? Sure. Um, I recommend, well, anything for kids, like American cartoons and stuff. Uh, I don't know what's popular now, but certainly when I was a kid, you know, watching things like Thundercats or uh, depending on the kind of show. And also there's, you can learn a lot of English from a British show as well. So a show like Peppa Pig, like that, that's popular with my kids, and so they will watch. Um, it's British English, but a lot of the vocabulary is the same. It's just the accent that's different. Uh, all right, now the chat like took me back down. It made me go to the bottom. It made me go to the bottom. Okay, so hi from Egypt. Good teacher. Glad to see you. Let's see, teacher. I live in Brazil. Oh, okay, we got that one already. All right, Julian says, chat GPT can establish dialogue with a person. It's amazing with a teacher and chat GPT have all the tools to learn English. Yep, so chat GPT can do, can do lots of things. And if you get lots of examples, it's great, especially if you can hear those examples. So you can, if you, if you put in an example, like give me some examples of, you know, you can actually say the specific grammar point and it will give you lots of those. But remember that the point is, uh, this is one kind of naturally varied review where we're looking at different examples uh, of how you can use one word. 
Uh, but you also want to hear that from different speakers. And so to be prepared for real conversations, you need to hear actual natives speaking in a native, fast, regular speech, or in a regular way, I should say. Uh, and shark with, so I, or MTH, if I'm pronouncing that. Uh, I talk with my mirror. Yeah, I'm saying you don't even have to do that. You can if you want to, but it's much better to spend your time getting this. All right, is this related to passive vocabulary? Well, passive vocabulary just means uh, vocabulary that you know, but you can't really use it and recall it quickly and automatically in conversations. So you would understand a lot of things. This is why most learners, they understand a lot of English, but they have trouble speaking. So they know a lot because like they know the word. Ah, I know that word. I hear the word make. I know that word, but uh, very few people actually get the systematic review like this that they need to be uh, that they need to develop an active vocabulary and that's what they need to speak uh, thanks for your videos you inspire me to learn more and more english more and more glad to hear uh, let's see all right hopefully i'm off to if i get back okay all right, I got through that one. Okay. okay, this is pretty odd. Will we make Paris before lunch? Yeah, and again, that's another good example, another even kind of more difficult example to make something like that, like will we make it? And this could be uh, a figurative thing. It could be a physical thing, like I might make it to uh, a particular location. So right now I'm running because I'm late. I don't know if I will make it to the hospital on time. I don't know if I will make it to my meeting on time. So it's, again, like I can talk about making like a physical thing or I can talk about making a trip. I could talk about being in a particular place at one time. So that's another good example. Uh, all right, let's see. Yep, she sells seashells by the seashore. Uh, how much wood, <laughs> yeah. so how much wood would a woodchuck chuck if woodchuck could chuck wood, that's right. Uh, could you explain how to use on to pretty please? Well, it just means like to move on to something else. Although like people will probably argue if on to is a word, usually it's like on to, but people just say it very quickly like that. So I can get on a train or I can get on to a train. It's the same idea. Uh, let's see, can you pronounce my name? Well, you have to, if you have, you have to write it phonetically then, use the IPA or something. Or try to just write it, write it how it would be, because I don't know how to read those characters. Gulsa. I mean, just looking at the English, I don't know how to pronounce that. Uh, the picture of Dorian Gray is wonderful. Yes, so you can read like lots of books like that. But in my video where I talk about how to speak fluently about almost anything, I make the point that rather than trying to read a bunch of different books, uh, it's better to get lots of review of a particular thing. So if you read. The, uh, the picture of Dorian Gray, then you should also watch, I don't know, if there's a movie about that also. I think um, like even uh, League of Extraordinary Gentlemen has Dorian Gray in it. Uh, so you would look for other references or people on YouTube talking about uh, videos or, or talking in videos about the, about the novel, that kind of thing. So how can I start learning all the meanings of the words that I know? Uh, you would just focus on one at a time. And again, when you're using naturally varied review in this, this is just one example. But I give like in the uh, how to make espresso video on my channel, you can find that same thing. So this is talking about a particular topic. And within that topic, you will hear lots of vocabulary. Some of the vocabulary will be the same. So in the espresso video, I did not know anything about making espresso. I'm not really a fan of coffee. I don't like coffee very much. I do like mocha. So chocolate and coffee. Uh, but uh, when I was watching that, there's a, a little, it's a little tool. Try to squeeze this. Uh, it looks like a little, little stamp kind of thing. And so they call this a tamp, T-A-M-P, to tamp. And I knew the, the word to tamp something, to tamp. Uh, but like everybody used this. They're talking about pressing the coffee down to make sure they really like pack it tightly inside this filter, all right? So that's something like, I did not know that vocabulary, but now I can explain how to make espresso pretty easily. And I only watched four videos about that. So you can do the same thing. So you can focus on individual words or you can focus on phrases or topics. What we do in uh, Fluent for Life is we, we do it by topic 
because you're going to hear lots of different things within that. So you're going to hear different grammar points or different vocabulary. You're going to hear different speakers as well. Uh, but the idea generally is how can we talk because the, the goal of the program is to help people have conversations about different things. So it's, it's not specifically about like only checking into a hotel uh, or only going to the hospital or something like that. It's really about having good conversations with people. All right, I love watching your old face-to-face -face conversations, which is teaching me how to react and respond. Yeah, so we, this is what we have in Fluent for Life. So we, we have some examples of those on the channel. So I'm speaking with other people. And again, you learn a lot more than just the language. You're learning the tone. You're learning the way we move, the way uh, maybe our gestures are or the ways we might say something. So it's much different than just maybe seeing it written in a textbook. You made my day with your nice voice. Yes, excellent usage of it. I'll make up for it. Yeah, that's another good example to make up for something. So a little bit uh, slightly different than this to make up for by talking, taking you out to dinner uh, next week. Well, thank you very much. All right, let's see. Oh, konnichiwa. kara. Oh, hello. Do you speak Japanese as well? I didn't know you speak Japanese. Let's see. Uh, sir, you are a great teacher. Yes, you are too kind. Glenda, hello from Vietnam. I am from India. ChatGPT is shy. It does not talk to me. It makes me angry. <laughs> So how can I practice my English? Again, the whole point of this video is that it's the understanding of the language that gives you the practice. So most students, they think they need to go out and repeat or to, to try to get into conversations and use particular things. But what I'm actually saying is that uh, rather than doing that, you get a whole bunch of different examples. You're getting naturally varied reviews. So you need the real language, plus you need to get uh, lots of different examples of it. What most people do is they will get maybe one example of something, they watch a video very quickly uh, and like a, a YouTube lesson about you know 20 phrasal verbs or something like that. Uh, but they don't review any of that information and so they try to use it in a conversation and they can't remember it. They think, ah, I forget what the word is. It doesn't, it doesn't come to their mind. So this is why people lose their words a lot in conversation. So. The, the point here, again, you're looking at all these examples. Each time you get another example, that is the practice that builds your fluency. Each time you get another example, that is the practice that builds your fluency. So it's not you repeating the same thing over and over again. And the reason we do this, uh, I've explained this many times, but it's a very important thing to remind people of because we get new people all the time, but everybody just needs a good reminder of it. But learning a language is different from learning an instrument. I know people often compare them as like you're, you're learning the habit of doing something uh, or learning, like you're, you're learning to speak and learning to play guitar is the same thing, but it's actually not. Uh, getting fluent is a very unique thing because conversations are dynamic. So conversations change. You need to be prepared to respond spontaneously and to understand what people are saying. <clears throat> so if I learn to play a song on the guitar, so I'm learning a guitar song, that song, the notes in that song will not change. It's always the same song. And so I can get better and better at practicing that thing, but it's much different from actually becoming a good speaker and being prepared for real conversations. Okay, so because uh, every conversation is unique, every conversation, just like I can be talking about something or I can make a video about people making espresso, but all of those videos are unique. Each person uses maybe some words that are the same, but a lot of them will be different. And so that's why we need to go through uh, and actually spend our time learning this way to get lots of examples. Now, often I will get comments from people. They say, hey, I watch like other people who are teaching on YouTube and I forget what I learned. And it's because you get maybe one example. Okay, here are 10 uh, very useful words in English. We've got make, go, play, sit, and something like that. But as you can see from just one word, look at all these different examples. And they're related like that. Okay, so the, this is the same way natives become fluent. People think that natives get fluent because they talk a lot, and that's helpful, uh, but it's really because they're getting so much understandable input. That's how they get fluent. So if you watch even native children like me when I'm watching my two daughters, they don't communicate unless they really feel confident about saying something. 
all right? It's the same thing like watching them. I think I told this story before. I was watching my younger daughter, Noelle. She was, uh, she's four years old and she was watching a TV show. And so she, she likes the, the theme music, the, the beginning introductory song for the show. And she was singing it along with it, but she didn't know the whole song. And so at some point she was very loud and yeah, like speaking very clearly, singing the words very clearly. And at other points in the song, she was just, mm -hmm, you know, as people will usually do. So even native speakers are shy uh, or they're usually just less confident about things that they, they don't know as well. But as they get lots of examples, that's where they feel much more confident and that's where they start speaking. Okay, so that's this down here. When you understand something, you feel confident and that's when you speak, all right? So it's not speaking first. Speaking is the result of understanding the language in this way, all right? So what I'm trying to do, like what I do in Fluent for Life is the, the whole point of the program is to take kind of to, to simulate the native learning environment, but I want to do it in a much more systematic way. Again, a native might hear something one time and then not hear it again. Or they hear something maybe a few times, but it's like really spaced out. So they hear something one day and then they don't hear that expression again for many weeks. And so they don't really develop fluency in that. Uh, they might understand something, but they don't really remember it very well. So what we want to do is take the native way of learning and then actually give you a lot of that like systematically. So we want to give you that, we're gonna help you learn the ways that natives speak. We're going to give you lots of different examples of it. You're going to hear different people speaking. You're going to write it, read it, listen to it, watch it. All of those different things are going to automatically build your fluency and speaking confidence. And then you speak, okay? So people will ask me about shadowing or whatever. Uh, and I'll just say the same thing about that. It's okay if you want to spend your time doing that. But if I had to choose for me spending my time doing something, like if I'm going to start learning a new language today, I'm gonna to be doing this. I'm not even, I'm not gonna bother trying to say anything. I just wanna hear, and as soon as I understand, I will start speaking some words. But my, the goal is really to understand it very well. I wanna understand it like a native, so I use it like a native. All right, you can say that again. Uh, so understanding is more important than just repeating. Yeah, and again, it's really important to understand this because conversations are dynamic. All right, I'm repeating myself, but it's important uh, to understand this. So conversations change. You can't just prepare like one phrase or a few phrases and then, and then oh, you get into the conversation and people don't use that or they say something different. So it's much better to get lots more examples of things like that and you hear lots of different uh, people saying that, which will improve your listening and pronunciation as well. All right, so the, the, the basic idea is that you wanna be learning like a native rather than a student, but you can do it even more uh, efficiently than natives are learning. So Tadeo says, let's see, uh, at the moment I do not speak Japanese, but I'm studying and trying to learn it along with English. Oh, well, good work, keep practicing over there. Remember, uh, learn Japanese in Japanese and English in English. To learn with music is cool. Yep, another good way to get that. I'm an Egyptian English teacher. You're, you're an amazing teacher. I've been following you for years. Hope we can meet once. Well, it's a pleasure. It's, um, I'm glad to help. Yeah, it would be great to do something kind of live. I will meet sometimes just randomly people in uh, like in Japan and they're like, oh, look, it's, it's you from videos, you know. <laughs> uh, and I, I met like uh, occasionally I, I will meet, meet some people like that. But yeah, it would be nice to have like a, like a live thing but that's again the reason why i do these is because i enjoy teaching uh so otherwise i don't have to make live videos but it's just fun for me to it's fun for me to teach because i don't have a like a physical classroom anymore uh let's see will this live be available later i'd like to play it many times yes i make all of my videos available is there any german speaker guy so if you're asking if other other people like in what like any german speakers are watching this no idea I'm your fan. You're my English guide, not just a teacher. We're glad to hear it, Jose. It's my pleasure. All right. Well, look at that. Oh, my goodness. We're under an hour for this video. <laughs> Let's see what time it is. It's 11.18. Oh, I didn't plug in my computer. Oh, my goodness. I should do that. How much time do I have left? Let me see here. Oh, I got some time. All right. 
yeah, for, I, was, I was busy trying to get ready for this video uh, and do some other recording as well. I got lots of things we're changing up uh, at the website. Uh, actually, if you'd like to learn more, I don't have a link in the description right now of this video, but if you go to EnglishAnyone.com and click on uh, free lessons, we have uh, three new articles up on the site that are talking more specifically about this information, uh, plus pronunciation and what's the other one? I forget, but you can you can see what we uh, what we have up there on the site now. Uh, my mind is dirty and I see uh, where I um, see things where there aren't any. Oh, a dirty mind, I see. Uh, well, it looks like, all right, well, maybe I, I think I got through everybody. If I didn't get your question, post it again. <laughs> I'm sorry, they're coming in too fast. And I think uh, earlier in the video, if I missed anybody. But now it's very difficult to go back and find them, unfortunately. Could you imitate something British? Some British, like, uh, well, give me something to say in, in British English, and I'll, I'll make it, uh, I'll say it for you. I'll give it a try. And there's, like, kind of different British. I'm not, I'm not an expert on British pronunciation, uh, but it's funny, like, Americans, like, make fun of, we make fun, make, make fun of Brits a little bit, uh, and Brits do the same thing about Americans. It's pretty fun. Uh, let's see. Do you have a particular, do you think you've got a particular accent? Um, it depends. Like the way I'm speaking right now, uh, it's, it's meant to be very clear and understandable, but I usually don't speak. And often I will speak this way if I'm speaking English to Japanese people, um, just to make sure I'm understandable. But when I'm speaking with my friends and family, I'm much more relaxed, uh, much more, uh, I don't really mumble my words, but I'm... Yeah, I'm not. I'm not being as careful as I am when I speak like this. I really want to make sure people understand me. But again, this is why it's also important the naturally varied review of hearing different speakers. So if you only hear English teachers, you're going to be very used to uh, easy to understand accents and clear speech. Uh, but this is why, uh, like in Fluent for Life, we want to take you from understanding teachers to understanding natives. So you need to be listening to lots of different native speakers as well, and that's how you get used to their vocabulary and their accents and their speed. All right, let's see. I'm learning English on italki right now. That senior female teacher told me I could even find a job in Canada. I don't believe it. Do you think it's necessary learning English on italki? I don't know what italki is. I've heard of it. Um, I, I guess it's like a like a teacher, like a... a typical kind of teaching thing, um, I guess. I don't know. I don't know what you could tell me more about it. Uh, but most, the, most uh, English education, and it doesn't matter even if it's on like an app uh, or like a new you know, software platform or whatever, it's still taking the same traditional approach uh, and, and giving you more lessons like that. So unless, uh, I, like I would be very cautious when you're looking at lessons. So if someone, like basically you need three things uh, I'll erase this. Hopefully people have gotten these examples over here. So the, the three things that you need, okay, that should be enough space, <clears throat> to become a fluent speaker. It's pretty simple. So I'll, I'll actually cover the things you do not need first. So you do not need to speak. Oops. So you do not need to speak. Uh, you do not need to live in an English-speaking country. I'm just going to write that very quickly. I know it's not very clear. So you do not need to live in an English-speaking country. Uh, you don't need to have like a native friend. Uh, you don't need to be young, like a you know, like a child or whatever. Can't spell today. Oh my goodness, you don't need to be young. Uh, you don't need to be, let's see, you don't have to have any like special talent. Okay, so these are the things you do not need to be fluent. So they're only just one, two, three things that you do need to be fluent. So the first one is you need to know spoken English. So spoken English, by that I mean the real language that natives are using in real conversations. 
Remember that the things you hear in lessons, uh, it might be some of the same vocabulary, but a lot of it is different. So the things you might learn in a lesson, uh, you might hear slow, clear speech. And so part of spoken English is the actual fast speech, the real accents that you hear. Um, and most of the time in English classrooms, you do not get this. So they're basically teaching you a different language. And again, I, I admit that even for myself, like for these videos that I do, I'm not speaking exactly the same that I would or the, speaking the same way that I would in a real conversation. Uh, but that's not really the point of these videos. It's really to help you understand how to learn. Um, but you can hear my real speaking voice in some of the conversation videos that we have on the channel and in Fluent for Life. Uh, so again, the first thing you need spoken English. So this is hearing the actual vocabulary natives use and then hearing the fast speech and difficult accents they have. Uh, the second thing is you need to understand like a native. Again, pardon my uh, quick speech here. So number one, you need to know spoken English. Number two, you need to understand English like a native. This means you're not using translations. You don't just hear a word like make and then get a, a translation in a different language or get a quick definition of it. You're getting naturally varied review. You're getting lots of different examples of that thing. Um, and so when you understand things in English, if you remember how you learned your native language when you were a child, this is how you did it. So it's not possible for a parent to translate anything to teach their child. So if I have a child uh, who's one or two years old, I can't use like Thai to teach them English because they don't know Thai either. They're learning their first language. So the only way they can learn that is by getting understandable messages all in English. So I hold up something like, look, black marker, red marker. And from those examples, they're actually learning it very quickly. Ah, okay, I understand because my dad makes it understandable for me. That's the only way you can learn your native language, okay? So if you use this same way of learning for learning a new language, then you get fluent the same way because we get fluent in any language the same way, all right? And so the last thing, uh, what I call is like own, you need to own the language. And this means, just like I've given you with these lo uh, lots of examples over here, uh, the naturally varied review that gets you fluent, okay? So when you're learning new vocabulary, if you hear it one time, you will probably forget that. It might stay in your passive vocabulary, maybe, but you will probably not be able to use that and you would not feel confident using it, especially if it's a longer phrase, all right? But if you own the language, it means just like we talked about that, I wanted to help you own the word make in this video. So the purpose of this video is to give you an example of how you can practice the language by yourself by just understanding the language like a native. So these two things are really connected. I mean, all three of them are connected, but this is how natives are getting fluent. So natives get all of these things and that's why they speak. It's not because of where they live or who their parents are uh, or because they have talent or anything else or because they're young. It's because they're getting these three things. So if you get those same three things, this is how you will get fluent also, okay? So just remember that. Uh, and when you're looking at like, should I join a, a language classroom or a live lesson or use italki or whatever? And again, I don't know anything about italki. Um, I think they've asked me to like advertise for them, but I don't advertise for anybody because nobody else does this. <laughs> it's weird, you know, I'd be happy to like recommend things if, if other people did this, but basically nobody does. Um, and so if you want to get uh, learning actual spoken English and you need to get understanding like a native, so you should be getting lots of different examples to help you own the language as well, that's how you get fluent. But most people, it's still going to be uh, even if they teach you some spoken English, it's still going to be very slow and easy to understand, and you will probably not get examples of natives actually using that in real life. Um, and then they will also be giving you examples of grammar points or like using more technical terms to try to help you understand something rather than helping you understand it like a native. All right, and then they don't review. So it's, and that's really the biggest issue that people have where they know English, they have a passive understanding, but they don't have the ownership level of the vocabulary because they just don't know it very well. So if I say the word make, and then they don't understand like make someone do something, those are, that's two different levels, okay? 
But the native speaker knows how to use all these different things because they've had so many different examples of the vocabulary. Okay? So the great thing about this is you don't need to speak. And you can do this by yourself. You can do it anywhere because you just need these three things. And you can do this by yourself. It's possible to do it even just with getting different examples of things like I showed with that uh, uh, making espresso video. But what I've done is just made a complete program for people who want help doing this. So that's what Fluent for Life is. But just remember this, when you're looking for programs, whether you learn with me or not, you need to be learning spoken English if you want to have uh, conversations and actually understand people. You need to understand it like a native, so you should be learning it like a native rather than trying to study, memori like memorize uh, translations or grammar rules. Definitely do not use translations while you're learning the language uh, because how you learn is how you speak. So when you're in a conversation, if you learn through translations, you will think again about translations, and that's why people get stuck. And then, of course, if you don't review it enough, you won't be able to use it automatically. The fluency is in the review. The fluency is in the review. It's not in the vocabulary itself. Okay, And this is why uh, lots of adult English learners, they know a lot. They know many words. They can understand what I'm saying because they have a good passive vocabulary, but they don't really own the language. They don't really know it well enough to use it fluently. Okay. Hopefully that makes sense. All right. Uh, all right. Shark. Perfect. There we go. Uh, Tadeo, because you don't listen to natural English speakers enough uh, that when they talk, they don't teach English like any teacher, what we call it casual or informal English speaking. Yeah, it's just the way the way people normally talk. That's it. So native speakers, they learn differently, they learn different vocabulary, and they practice it differently as well. So the practice is really in all these examples. Again, remember the school example for a native speaker. When you have a, an actual classroom, it doesn't matter what the class is, even a science class. I'll put my classroom picture up here again. We have a teacher standing up and a whole bunch of students are sitting down listening. The teacher is trying to explain in the same way that I'm, I'm giving a class right now. It's just we're online instead of in a physical classroom. But I'm doing the one, I'm the one doing the talking, okay? So the teacher is, it's like 99% uh, teacher talking and maybe 1%, 1 2% uh, students talking. So the teacher might ask a question and the student says, okay, I have the answer to that. Uh, but most of this is just, it's just listening and understanding it, all right? But I want to be clear, it's not just listening. Like, you don't want to learn a language only by listening. You want to read it, write it, listen, all of those things, all right? Now, I know that maybe I shouldn't ask this. Could you give me some advice on how to overcome demotivation in studies? I'm really depressed and feel very sad. Okay, no, that's not a bad question at all. Uh, it's a common thing. And again, the reason people feel demotivated when they learn is because they learn the traditional way. So they sit in a classroom that doesn't teach them spoken English. It doesn't help them learn like a native. So it's confusing and frustrating for them. And they don't get any review. So they don't feel like they make any progress. That's it. So the motivation comes when you actually learn real things that people use. Like in this video, we, just, we have a bunch of different examples of make and you will probably feel more confident. You can actually feel your, improving, uh, your improvement uh, when you learn this way. Okay, so the motivation comes from enjoying what you do, just like when you learn your native language. When you learn new things, and you were learning new things all the time in your native language, you feel good about that. Ooh, I learned some new word or phrase. Let me try that with my friends, you know. But you hear it usually a couple of different times. Television tells you something, radio, maybe you read it somewhere, you see it online, and then you feel confident bringing it up in a conversation, okay? So the motivation comes from this, naturally. It's just understanding the language like a native, learning the language like a native, and then learning the real language, okay? It's pretty simple. So if you feel demotivated, you could tell me a bit more specifically about why that is, but I'm guessing it's probably the, uh, you're not learning it like a native. Like if you have a classroom lessons or something and it doesn't actually help you speak. Uh, I would like to listen to your opinion about this because your culture is different. I would feel grateful. Thanks in advance. Uh, yep, Jose. So again, uh, everybody teaches this this way all over the world. I, I don't think there's a, I'm, there's sure, surely must be some people who teach like me in the classroom, but I would imagine like a school system 
or a district, like an actual area of many different schools are probably not applying this. More people will, will start doing it, I think, with Frederick, which I'm happy about. So uh, schools and uh, teachers are using it already. And so Frederick, you can click on the link in the description below this video to get that. Uh, but this is a system that gives you this. Um, so it's, it's giving you, it's, it's actually focused on pronunciation and listening, um, but you're still going to get basically teaching yourself the language all in the language. And that's the most important part. All right. So if you feel this is for everybody, but if you feel demotivated or you're feeling tired or frustrated or whatever, um, like you don't you don't need any of this stuff. So don't feel bad uh, about, you know, whatever that thing is. But so I lost my self-confidence. Yeah. So the self-confidence, again, it comes from this. So everything comes back to learning like a native and understanding like a native. And you don't need to speak or live in an English speaking country to do that. You can see right now you are learning English like a native. All right. So you're getting uh, English all in English from me. I'm giving you lots of native examples the same way natives would, you know, this is the same thing I do with my own kids at home. As I love my job because it's like I can do the same thing at home. I do the same thing here. I'm not, I don't teach you differently than I teach my own kids. So it would be, it would be demotivating for me uh, if I taught my kids one way and then I come here and I'm like, okay, let's talk about the present perfect and we're going to give a bunch of examples of it. You know, that would be, ugh. So I want to help them. I can't explain to my daughters what the present perfect is, but I can give them examples of things and help them understand like a native. <clears throat> So let's see, Rev says, uh, I'm always nervous when I'm speaking English. What can I do? You got to understand better. That's, that's really the answer. So if you feel nervous, you think about what specifically you're nervous about. Usually doubts come into to people when they're, they're learning something and they feel, um, they feel unprepared or they feel they don't really know the vocabulary very well. That's where the doubts actually come from. And so when you're learning the language, if you, if you don't feel confident about a particular word or phrase or whatever, you just need more experience with it. So don't try to speak more and, and overcome that. And the point is really just to get, uh, get to the point where you feel uh, confident about what you make. Well, Helen again says, I need to make an appointment, yes. Uh, Guillermina, Guillermina. Uh, good evening. Do you think that Duolingo really works to learn English? Uh, I'm not a user of Duolingo for Japanese, and I, 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 I can't really recommend it or not for learning English. Uh, I don't, I don't, I'm sure there are some people who, who learn with it, but for me, um, it doesn't seem like a very efficient way to, way to learn. I know they're, like the business model of that is to try to keep people using the app as long as possible so they can make advertising revenue and also like they get people paying for courses as well. Um, but I'm, I, I haven't used it. Uh, I mean, I've tried it just to see what it's like, but I, I wouldn't recommend that um, for my students. But, and I don't use it personally, so I, I don't really like to comment on something that I don't personally use. Uh, but this is how I get fluent in Japanese. So I just said this is how I got fluent in Japanese. Uh, I don't I don't use like apps or anything to learn Japanese. Arto, nice to see you there from Honduras. All right. Well, I'm going to lose my voice and it's getting time. My, my computer is telling me, oh, I need to need to shut it off now. How can I sign up for the course? How long will it take? Uh, if you're asking about like how long will learning take when you learn this way, uh, hopefully it's clear that, okay, you can, you can become fluent in the word make very quickly, okay? So you can become fluent in particular vocabulary. This is how you get fluent. You get fluent word by word uh, rather than uh, trying to get fluent in the entire language. But because you learn this way, you can now learn or you can now use the word make when you're talking about other things. So I can make plans, make someone happy. You made my day. I might make some money. I'm going to make lunch after this video is finished. Maybe I'll make another video tomorrow. Okay. So as you can see, I'm getting fluent in particular things like one at a time by, uh, by really giving like a lot of attention, by putting a lot of attention into particular things like this. Okay. Uh, so you will become a fluent speaker very quickly. Usually what we do uh, for, 
for Fluent for Life. So you can click on the link in the description to learn more about that. Uh, but you will speak more fluently in the next 30 days or less. And again, that's for a whole topic. So talking about pets or uh, I don't know, makeup or going to the doctor or exercise and fitness or travel or money and accounting or whatever. So lots of different things. You get to choose the particular topics you learn uh, and everyone creates their own course within the program. So it's basically like Netflix, uh, but for language learning. So we give you all of this. It's, it's like simulating a native environment, but we want to give you the freedom to choose what you learn because nobody wants to sit and study some things that they don't like. So you choose the particular topics you're interested in, you get the naturally varied review and you get fluent. It's pretty much that simple. So you will get fluent in particular things like particular vocabulary or whatever. Um, you know, it could, be, it could be a minute or two that you really understand something or it could take longer. But we, we usually take, uh, we, give, we give people a month to go through each lesson set and you can spend uh, more time learning if you have more time. All right, uh, but that's it. Before this, uh, please, before you go, what's your, what's your question? Uh, please pronounce a word like a bottle of water. Would, I, I, would, uh, I would like a bottle of water in British. So uh, you mean like, like how a British person would say that? <laughs> like, uh, well, this is one kind of British person. They might say like a bottle, a bottle of water, a bottle of water, you know. <laughs> I always find that strange that British English is kind of pronouncing like that. Like they remove sounds from words and they add sounds to other words. So like water, so American English like that, I would say water. But a British person would say like water or they would say like water if they're, if they're a little bit like, it seems like a class kind of thing, like a little bit higher class, like, like water, water. But water, 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 go any water, go. <laughs> Go, go any walk. <laughs> I need some, I need some water, water, please. And so, so Brit British English can be harder for some people to pronounce. It just depends on what you'd like to use. But if you were speaking to a British person to say, do you have any water? Pretty simple. Last question. Uh, is it useful to learn English by watching cartoons? Yes. Like Callius. I, I don't know if that's a cartoon name or not. How to prepare for an English interview. I would watch a bunch of other people watch, doing interviews if you want to prepare for a specific interview. Like, uh, and, and more than that, depending on what kind of interview it is, if you're trying to get a job, I would learn a lot about the company and talk about how you can help the company. That's how you get the job, all right? Whatever your language skills are. If they think you can earn them more money, uh, then they will, they will probably like hire you even if your language is not perfect. So I think you need to listen uh, a lot and wait for your level to get better. Yeah, again, but you can do it. It's, it's a pretty quick process. Teacher. Teacher, you must drink some water, some water. Yeah. <laughs> I hope some British people are not watching this video right now. They might come and get me. All right. Anyway, I think we will end the video. That is a good note to end the video on. But hopefully I have made you, hopefully I have made you a little bit more confident with this video. Remember, you don't need to speak. You don't need to live in an English speaking country. You just need to understand the language like a native. All right. If you'd like to do that, click on the links in the description to learn more about that. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.